Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, takes us on another hilarious and heartwarming journey with Kevin McAllister. In this sequel to the holiday classic, Kevin finds himself separated from his family once again, but this time in the bustling streets of New York City. As he navigates the city that never sleeps, Kevin faces new challenges and encounters familiar foes. The McAllister family is gearing up for yet another family vacation, this time heading to Florida. However, Kevin is less than thrilled, especially since Florida lacks the presence of Christmas trees. On the eve of the trip, the family participates in a school chorus event where Kevin has a vocal solo. However, Buzz, Kevin's older brother who is also in the chorus, makes fun of Kevin, leading to a heated altercation between the two brothers and ultimately spoiling the performance. Upon returning home, Buzz offers a formal apology to the family for his behavior. However, in a private aside to Kevin, he confesses that the apology was was merely a tactic to coerce Kevin into apologizing. In response, Kevin openly scolds the family for siding with Buzz, resulting in his banishment to the attic. Afterward, Kevin's mother, Kate, approaches him to encourage an apology, but Kevin remains adamant. He declares that if he had his own money, he would choose a vacation away from his family. The following day, the family is on the brink of missing their airport express to the airport. Fortunately, they manage to make it in time, including Kevin. However, upon their arrival at the airport, they are still running late for the plane, prompting a frantic rush. In the chaos, Kevin inadvertently falls behind and, when he looks up, confuses a man for his dad, following him onto another plane. Both flights safely reach their destinations. Eventually, the McAllister family arrives in Florida, only to realize that, yet again, Kevin is nowhere to be found. In the meantime, Kevin finds himself in New York, but is uncertain about his location. With no sign of his family and a view of a non-tropical city from the airport window, Kevin inquires with an airline attendant. Initially dismayed by the situation, he soon recognizes the opportunity to have some solo fun. Additionally, Kevin has his dad's bag in hand, complete with cash and credit cards. In Florida, Kevin's parents report him missing. Upon contacting the Chicago airport, they learn that no one has reported seeing him. Kevin's dad discovers his wallet and credit cards are also missing. They promptly report the lost credit cards, enabling tracking in case Kevin tries to use them. Wandering into Central Park, Kevin discovers the Plaza Hotel. Employing a tape recorder to alter his voice, he creates a hotel reservation message. Kevin approaches the front desk, where he persuades the clerk that his father sent him to check in with his credit card. The clerk handles the paperwork, but the nearby concierge grows suspicious of Kevin. Later that evening, the concierge plans to enter Kevin's room, but Kevin tricks him into believing he has walked in on his father, prompting the concierge to hastily retreat. That same night, Kevin examined his father's possessions and discovered the address of his uncle Rob. The following day, seeking to make amends, the concierge organizes a limousine and orders pizza for Kevin. During Kevin's absence, the concierge cross-checks the credit card used and discovers it has been reported as stolen. Meanwhile, Kevin arrives at a toy store named Duncan's Toy Chest, where he makes several purchases. The elderly gentleman at the cash register informs Kevin that all the day's sales will be donated to the local children's hospital. Kevin generously contributes additional money and, as a token of appreciation, receives an ornament of two turtle doves from the cashier. As he leaves, Kevin comes to the realization that he has just encountered the owner of the toy store, Mr. Duncan. Contemplating his next move, Kevin hears a familiar voice and turns around to find himself face to face with Harry and Marv, the two men who tried to rob his family's home the previous Christmas. Panicking, Kevin retreats and returns to the Plaza Hotel. Seeking assistance from the concierge, Kevin's request is denied, and his credit card is confiscated with the intention of reporting him to the police. Determined to escape, Kevin dashes into the hotel, makes his way to his room, hastily packs his belongings, and plays the gangster movie as the concierge and his team enter the room. The film appeared to engage in a dialogue with them, while Kevin was slipping away. Kevin exits through an emergency door, only to encounter Harry and Marv once more. They seize Kevin and inform him of their plan to rob Duncan's toy chest that night. Kevin captures their plan with his tape recorder. Nonetheless, Kevin manages to slip away once more and seeks refuge in Central Park, hiding himself within a carriage trunk as it departs. In Florida, the local police inform the McAllisters that Kevin has used a credit card in New York, prompting the family to pack up and leave, many eager to escape the constant rainy weather. 
As night descends, Kevin goes to a house supposedly belonging to his uncle and aunt, only to discover it under repair. Returning to Central Park, he encounters an old woman caring for pigeons. Initially apprehensive, Kevin soon realizes she poses no threat. They discreetly ascend to the rafters of Carnegie Hall and witness a performance. Amidst the music, the elderly woman engages in a conversation with Kevin, exchanging thoughts about life. Ultimately, Kevin ventures back into the night and stumbles upon a children's hospital. Recalling Harry and Marv's intentions, Kevin devises a strategy to thwart their plans of stealing the money. Returning to his uncle and aunt's house, Kevin, akin to the previous year in his own home, sets up a series of booby traps. Kevin returns to Duncan's toy chest, observing Harry and Marv extracting money from a cash register through the window. Kevin takes their photo to be used as evidence. Attracting their focus, he shatters the window, triggering the alarm. Kevin guides them back to the house, skillfully luring the two criminals into falling for many of his traps. After calling 911, he intends to then lead them into Central Park, but he slips on some ice, allowing Harry and Marv to catch up to him. Kevin's rescue comes as the bird woman tosses bird feed onto the two burglars, leading to a swarm of birds attacking them. Shortly thereafter, the police arrive and apprehend Harry and Marv. Back at Duncan's toy store, Mr. Duncan found Kevin's letter, expressing his apologies and explaining that he took those actions to apprehend the criminals. As Kevin's mother searches for him and speaks with the police, she realizes Kevin's love for Christmas trees. They decide to go to Rockefeller Center, home to the iconic Christmas tree. It is there that they reunite and reconcile. The next morning, waking up in their hotel, they find a collection of gifts sent by Mr. Duncan. Buzz expresses gratitude to Kevin, acknowledging that if he hadn't messed up once again, they might not have been in a better position to celebrate Christmas. They proceed to unwrap the gifts together. Silently slipping away, Kevin pays a visit to the bird woman, presenting her with one of the turtle doves as a symbol of their enduring friendship. The film concludes with Buzz receiving a bill detailing all of Kevin's room service expenses, prompting their dad to express his dismay. And the movie ends here. Thank you for watching, and I highly recommend watching the entire movie as it is incredibly enjoyable. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel, so you can stay updated and receive notifications whenever we upload new videos.